In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We do live in a, an information overload era. I mean, I, I don't think anybody would argue with that. There are too many messages, too many messages, text messages chat messages, email messages, again, not from you. I welcome email messages from you and my family and my friends. Um, publicity messages, political messages, advertisement messages. Um, and some of these are very important. Storm warning messages. Did anybody get one of those last night? Um, but sometimes they just sort of come at us and we get frustrated, we get anxious. How do we deal with all of this? We try to organize them or prioritize them, work through them as quickly as we can. And by the time we've done that, there are 25 more messages of some sort you know, that we have to deal with. It's an, ongoing, it's an ongoing challenge. But again, some of those messages are important, even if we don't take them seriously at first. I mean, for instance, road, miss, road signs. A couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, I was headed into town, driving off of 688, taking a left onto 211 to come into town. And they've been working on 211, they've been repaving um, that, that highway. And um, I took a left and was headed into town, and after about a mile, uh, there was a sign that said, um, road work ahead. I said, oh, great. How, long is it, how much extra time is it going to take me to get into town? And so I went a little bit farther, and the, the, and, and the sign said, rough road ahead. Oh no, it's really going to be a problem. I've got to slow down. And, and then a, a little while farther down the road, the sign said, stay in lane. I said, okay, I can do that. You know, that, that's helpful. I mean, you stay right here in this lane. And then uh, farther down the road, it said, unmarked lanes. I thought, what is that? How can you have a lane that's not marked? Another confusing thing, and, and yet, in just a few, just a few feet uh, down the road, the sign said, bump, which meant you're leaving the non-paved area and getting onto the paved area. You know, everything was fine as I sailed into town on nice, smooth pavement. Sometimes the signs are very important, and we don't want to deal with them because we're not in a good place. But road signs are important. Storm warnings are important. Messages from God are important. And that's what we're looking at today. This gospel reading is really a portion of what's called the farewell discourse in the gospel according to John. And what's taking place is that uh, Jesus is talking, it's at the Last Supper, and he's, he's giving some last minute instructions. He's uh, preparing them again. Um, everybody's there that he was going to be betrayed. And he named Judas as, not Judas, not Iscariot, but the other Judas, <coughs> you're going to betray me. And he told them, he was telling them to love the Father because the Father and I are one. And, we are one and we want to be at one with you. And he told them to be faithful. Just lots of information, lots of information. And information that sort of covered the waterfront. But again, it was sort of a, it was a summary. And it just saying, folks, you know, keep, hang in there. Um, you've been faithful so far. I know that you will be challenged in the near future. But God is with you. That's basically what it was, what it was about. And so, there he sort of ends with a message of peace and comfort. And, and he says to them, peace I leave with you. I'm leaving, but have my peace. My peace I give to you. A lot of stuff's going to happen, but I'm giving you my peace and don't forget it. And so, that message so critical of course, you've heard, we hear the words, don't be afraid, throughout the scriptures, throughout the gospel. But this is about peace. And so, in the early church, as the Eucharistic liturgy, which we do now, was developed, 
um, that message is included. I mean, every, every Sunday, after the, the readings and the sermon and the prayers and the confession, the creed, we all stand and say, the peace of Christ be with you always. And it's important when we do that, it's important for us to remember where that came from. It's not just a message, have a happy peace day. That's a whole lot more than that. It's a message saying, in the context, realizing that faith in Jesus Christ is no big party all the time, it is often a challenge and requires courage and strength and commitment and perseverance. So knowing all of that, still, may the peace of Christ be with you. It's a, it's a message of deep belief in the truth and message of Jesus Christ and the, and the fact that we're called to share it with each other. Now, I know that what happens here, and I enjoy it too myself, quite frankly. I mean, we stand and we say the peace, and then we sort of, you know, cross the aisle and hug each other, and haven't seen you in a long time, I'm glad you're here. You know, it becomes sort of a hospitality thing, which is okay. However, however, we need to remember every Sunday of the depth of that message we give to each other. The peace of Christ, not just happy to see you, but the peace of Christ be with you always. We look each other in the eyes and give them that message from Jesus. I want you to look in the eyes of somebody near you. Yes, we're going to do it twice today. I want you to look in the eyes of somebody near you and say, the peace of Christ be with you always. Right now. Peace of Christ be with you always. And so you see what happens. We can't help but smile because it is connecting with each other. But beneath that, beneath that, we know, and we need to be reminded about it, which is what I'm doing. Beneath that, we know the reason that we're connected with each other. It's not just because we feel like we're all good people, but the reason in this church is that it is through Jesus Christ that we're connected, and we're going to celebrate that, and that's going to give us strength, and that's going to give us courage, and that's going to keep us going day after day after day. What a powerful message from Jesus through the gospel to us. There's another powerful message in the Acts of the Apostles. Um, this is a turning point, literally, in that story of how the message of Jesus was spread throughout the Mediterranean. This is uh, the story of Paul, who was a stubborn guy and didn't like Christians at first, and yet through a dramatic event, he was shocked and he was spoken to, and he turned to Jesus and became a primary evangelist of the gospel. And so, so he, he had learned in a hard way, in a dramatic way, which doesn't happen with most of us, but he had learned how to listen to Jesus, to, to God. And so he had a vision, and somehow, he knew that this vision was of the Holy Spirit. There was a man calling from Macedonia, come help us, come share with us the word. And so Paul responded to that call. He felt like it was valid, and it was. And so he went to a place that was, uh, he figured would be a holy place, a place of worship, and a woman shows up, Lydia. And um, She's, so you see, this story, this message to us through Scripture is important because this begins the, the journey of Paul to Europe, to Greece, to Macedonia, to Greece, to Macedonia. So it's also important in this story, this message from Scripture to us, that Lydia shows up, who's a very interesting character in the story. 
in the gospel story. Because she's a woman, she has her own business, she's independent, independently wealthy, selling purple cloth to the rich. Those were the only people who were, who were allowed to wear purple. And she was designated as the head of the household, which meant her husband, if she had a husband, was not the head of the household, but she, a woman, was the head of the household. And so the, the message we're receiving, again, through the Acts of the Apostles is there were women leaders. There were women who had influence and, and were not only actively working, but also contemplative praying so she could sense the presence of God in other people and in her life. And she was drawn to Paul to hear the message. And she ended up being baptized along with the rest of her family. It's an important message about women and about the spread of the gospel throughout that area. And the scripture says that God prepared her to hear this message from Paul. So again, it says she was a worshiper of God. So she was in the practice of listening in her own way. But she got the message and she became a Christian. We've been reading, um, coming to the class, but also just as a parish read, six, 60 of you bought the book of uh, Brown, Barbara Brown Taylor, um, Altar in the World. And you know what? Basically, that book is about listening for messages from God, not in scripture, but in creation and daily life, maybe in an event just like this, maybe in an event like a coffee hour. But, but listening, be attuned to listening for messages to come to us from various sources from God for the purpose of, of reaching our hearts and our souls as we try to live a good life. And the chapter that we're looking at this year, and all of you are invited to join us at, following this, this worship, uh, following coffee hour and then this worship, um, the chapter is a very interesting chapter because it's talking about finding God in the practice of getting lost or in, in the wilderness, in the wilderness. And Barbara Van Taylor points out this is, this is typical scripture stuff. I mean, Abraham and Sarah were wilderness people who listened to God. Crazy idea that God gave them to chat. Moses. Um, Elijah finding God in a still small voice. And the idea is, which Barbara Brown Taylor talks about, is that when we're lost, we're sort of vulnerable. And it depends on the kind of lost we are. If we have a flat tire out in the midnight in the middle of nowhere, we're really vulnerable. Uh, you know, we depend on the goodness of strangers. We depend on others. But when we are in the wilderness and when the lost, we might, we might be even more willing to hear and be affected by a message from God also. Because our defenses to do it ourselves and take care of ourselves as an individual might be a little less strong. And therefore, we might be willing to be formed by God. So getting lost and being in the wilderness, as long as you're safe, might not be a bad thing. It might be a great opportunity to hear God's message. And she points out she's not only talking about a physical wilderness, but what about a wilderness as a result of a difficult relationship? Or a wilderness as a result of not having a job anymore? Or a wilderness because some sort of physical challenge is really changing your lifestyle? Or because of somebody really, really important to you has died? You know, that kind of emotional wilderness as well as a physical wilderness. And she really encourages us to see those times, not just as challenges to get over, but to see if there's a message from God in that tender space. That's worth thinking about.
Because God is there. In the colic for the day, which sort of sets the tone for this time together, you heard, pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. And you see what it's talking about is, God, give me your love so that I can more fully love you. Um, I'm, I'm going to switch it around just a little bit. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we may receive your messages which bring us peace and courage. That's, that's a great statement to hear in regards to the overall message for today because the bottom line is we need help. We say this over and over again because it's true. We need help learning how to hear the messages of God. I mean, we do sometimes, but sometimes we don't. Maybe a lot of times we don't. We need help. And what this prayer is saying is, God, help me with your love to learn how to hear you. You know? It's sort of like, I'm not going to take care, again, I'm not on my own going to figure it out to, 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 to really know how to hear you. But God, I need your help so that I can better hear your message for me at this time. So in that question which ends statements, like what are you going to do? I suggest that. I suggest that maybe various times throughout the day you might, whether you're walking or sitting or wondering, simply say, God help me to hear you. It's something really simple. It's not really basic like that. And say it maybe 10 times a day. So that what you're doing is you're training your mind and your heart to turn to God for help so that you can hear God, which is critical for any believer and critical during these times. God always wants to hold us, hug us, and kiss us, and be with us, nurture us, enlighten us, empower us. All we have to do is hear it and say yes to God. Think about that for a minute. Amen.